Hello and welcome to Friday Night Fright Presents Comic Book Calvacadia 2020. Man, we're going to have some fun this month. Every episode in May, every day in May, there's going to be a brand new episode. It's going to be a mini review of a comic book movie. Yay, can't wait, hyped. So it's going to cover the gauntlet. It's going to be loads of MCU stuff. There's going to be some DC stuff probably. Uh, it might be some other stuff. There's going to be Flash recaps of Flash Season 2 every Tuesday. Um, so it's going to be four or five of those, depending on how many Tuesdays are in May. But it's going to be tight, because I've also got a week off. Yay! Anyway, this is the intro comic for Cavcadia. So you hear this every day of the week, and then you'll hear an intro for the movie and I'm covering that day. Or TV show. Ooh, scary! Anyway, I'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. Hey, cool cats and killings. I'm back. And when I say I'm back, I mean that I had an episode up yesterday and this episode today is a bit different this is a tuesday night flash which maybe some of you are new viewers i don't know lynn listeners I don't know. but i've been covering flash season one for the last few weeks and now i'm covering flash season two one episode every tuesday so yay so i'll be doing that today with the um season two premiere so that'll be cool um flash is a good tv show and that'll be up just after a brief word from our sponsors. And that's Flash 2.1. So it starts with, um, uh, you know, Barry being all happy and stuff because he's fighting Captain Kong Heatwave. And I'm like, yay, yay, Michael Schofield and Lincoln Burroughs are back. So Barry beats up Lincoln Burroughs, gets shot by Michael Schofield for the cold gun. Boo, Barry goes down. He's like, oh, no. And if Captain Gold's like, ha, 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 you'll die now, Barry. And I'm like, wait a second, Captain Gold didn't want to murder Barry. I thought they were formed a rough alliance. And wait, the last time we saw Captain Gold is allied with, like, Storm and some, some of those other people, Rainbow, Rainbow Raider and, you know, his sister and maybe a couple of people. What's going on? Why is he teaming up Heatwave again? You know, but then... Just for he's about murder Barry, which goes against his previous Captain of Venom. Firestorm runs in and so like, no, you don't. Fire negates cold. And Captain Colt's like, no, it doesn't. Then he's knocked back by fire and he falls over a railing. And Barry runs over and smashes Colt gun. He's like, ha, 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 And then looks up wrong and goes, hey, bro. And wrong, he's still like, sir, I'm late, bro. And then flies off. And so like, yay, yay, everything's okay. So then we cut Star Labs with Barry's with Iris, Caitlin, Cisco, Joe. And everyone's like, man, we're so awesome. We're best team ever. We're better than Team Arrow. Yay. And then frigging wrong he goes in. He's still like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you, Mrs. Raymond. And she's like, I'm gonna take you, Mr. Raymond. And like Professor Stein is like, don't don't do that. I don't want you to pitch that again. You know, where's my wife? Where's Professor Stein's wife? So then from there it cuts it has um Eddie walks into like Barry, you're my boy. And I'm like, wait a second, Eddie got fucked up in the last episode. And then first uh, Waves Harrison Waves is there. He's like, you know, I respect you, Barry. And he gets out of his chair. But what will you do about me? And I'm like, wait, what? And then it cuts to the present day, six months later, from like the season of night last year. And Barry's in a room on his own. And he looks sad, so I guess the team split up. Okay, sure, why not? And from there we cut to a brief see package of how Barry's the fastest man alive. And he'll never be top because uh, the reverse flash is dead. So no one can match Barry's speed. And then Joe's like, Barry, you got to join us. We're at crime scene. Remember season one? Remember it? And Barry's like, but but I'm Anstey this year. And Joe's like, come on, come to crime scene. They go to crime scene and they find the dead body of WWE wrestler Edge. And I'm like, holy shit, Edge is dead? Wait, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. He just wrestled this year's WrestleMania. What's going on? And then, uh, like, this is our Rothstein. I'm like, okay, he's dead. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, you know. But it immediately puts me at ease, because I can't imagine, like, the performer Adam Copeland, a.k.a. WWE Star Edge. I mean, he's not going to be someone who's going to do a multi-episode stint on Flash, you know. He's, he's he's fine with doing brief cam, you know. This isn't going to impact the rest of the episode at all. So then Barry's like, he, he was choked to death. And Joe's like, that doesn't seem very... Very superhero, and Barry said, Well, nothing's about superheroes, Joe. Nothing's about superheroes. And Joe's like, Yeah, speak of Barry, they're doing flashlight celebrations today. We may as well give you keys to the city. And Barry's like, Why? And Joe's like, Just go, Barry, go. Go, Barry, go. 
and find out Barry's been alienating Team Flash and um, Caitlin's working at Mercury Labs and Cisco's insistent to police force. And he's like, hey guys, you know, I may do this thing which will catch up all met humans. It's called the boot. And Joe's like, Dad's boot? And Cisco's like, no, we don't, we won't go down there, Joe. We won't go down there. And then he makes fun of Captain Sinch growing a beard. And I'm like, holy shit, that's hilarious. It's like, Captain Sinch doesn't have beard, he's got a boyfriend and fiance. So come on, Cisco, that's really, really poor for you. It's not even a good joke. So from there, um, they're um, doing various bits and pieces. Someone's following Barry and taking pictures of him for some reason. And Iris is saying, Joe, Joe, we need to stop letting Barry push us away because, you know, we got to start up, we got to work towards Barry and Iris. That's the end game. And Joe's like, Iris, look. You literally just lost your boyfriend to you shout that six months ago. And Joe goes, oh, whatever, whatever. Look, look. we got to focus on season two. Season two, everything changes. Everything changes season two. And then from there, um, Barry's like, fine, I'll go to Flash Day celebration if I have to. And when he's there, he's like, yeah, just, just give me your key. Give me your key, Mayor. But then someone take photos of Barry. And then weird stuff starts happening. This guy walks out in a gimp costume. And he's like, Virgil Siri. And he sounds very familiar. But I can't place the voice. He's like, you uh, you have been judged. And you've been left wanting. You failed this city. And I'm like, wait, isn't that Green Arrow's thing? Or Arrow, or other Green whatever it's called. And this guy's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. So then Joe and Cisco are like, Joe shouts Cisco. Cisco, use the boot. That's boot. Cisco's like, we're not calling it. That's boo. But he tries anyway, and this Al Ruff, it's a guy, the, the, the guy is like, oh my lord, ow, my leg. Wait a second, not my leg, ha ha. And then he got, rises a foot in Yang, everyone's like, wait, what? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. And then Barry's like, well, I'm, I'm going to punch him, right? I'm going to punch him. He tries to punch him, but it doesn't work, and this guy's like, ha, I'm going to smash you into a car. And then he does, and he's like, oh, I'm just going to walk away now, bye. And he walks off, and everyone's like, wait, what? And then Barry's, like, at Star Labs later on. So, like, yeah, that guy got a lucky shot. But, you know, just like Rocky too. if I get a rematch, I'll kick his ass. And everyone's like, Rocky didn't really kick Apollo's ass. He barely beat him in, like, the 90th round. And Barry's like, just don't ruin my metaphor. I'll win, is my point. I'll win. No. And then everyone's like, Barry, why don't we just, like, you literally have everyone in the room. You have Professor Stein. You have Caitlin. You have Cisco. You have Iris. You have Joe. Eddie's dead, Harrison's dead, but like, you know, you've got a great team, Barry's like, I don't need you guys, I will need you, I'll do this on my own, I'll track him, and then uh, like, Barry runs off, and Cisco's like, oh my god, he doesn't have his card, also there's two flashbacks I forgot to mention, one where Harrison wears slimy, Laura gives Barry a tape, and he's like, I won't watch it, and Laura's like, why well, ain't watch either, he said only you should watch it, and on his request, even though he's dead, and he would never know, you know, but that's fine. Also, it's weird to give you this, but that's because he called it before he even met you, but that's fine, that's okay. And then Cisco goes to Caitlin at Mercury Labs, and he's like, Cisco's like, you know, you, can, I found this badge, and, and like, X-ray machines went down after the guy grew in size by like 15 feet, and you know, we need to like do this, this, and this. Also, apparently, his name's Al Rothstein. Al Rothstein's dead, he's dead, so how is he alive? And uh, Caitlin's like, oh, no, Cisco, just, how did you get in anyway? Cisco's like, I had to make some bad choices. And Caitlin's like, okay. So Flair, Iris is like, says Joe again, look, we can't let Barry walk away, you know. It's romance arc, romance arc. And then Barry is with the team, and they're all telling him, Barry, we need you to listen to us, because we know how to stop him. Barry's like, I'll let you have super speed, and I just stop singularity, and Rongy died, there's another flashback, Rongy died, during, when they stop singularity like a dumbass, and Caitlin begging him not to go, because if he goes, he'll die, and, and no one around was like, Caitlin, if he doesn't go, we'll all fucking die, and Caitlin doesn't seem to give shit, because she's lost all her agency, and she's obsessed with boys again, you know. Which is it's just annoying because I assume Daniela Pang Baker is probably a reasonably good actress, but she gets nothing to work with on the show. I mean, Cisco's got his rising superpowers, Caitlin's got nothing to work with whatsoever. So from there, and Barry's like, you know, I'm going to fight the Sky Goka. <sighs> I don't care what you guys say, I don't need a plague, I'm going to fight him. So he goes to fight Sky, and he gets his ass kicked, and somehow skates, so I kind of blacked out during that bit. And Barry's at Star Labs, and they're like, Barry, you almost died. And Barry's like, 
Oh my god, my god. And they're like, Barry, you you gotta listen to us. You almost died. Barry's like, God damn it, look guys, I'm I'm scared, alright? I'm scared. Oh, and by the way, me I'm gonna visit Caitlin to help Gabe say I feel about Ronnie dying 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 and Caitlin's gonna be like, Barry, you are so, you know, it's, 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 it's six months ago, get over it. Ron, you already died once. I'm fine, Barry, you piece of shit. But it's like, what, my new head? He's like, you're not okay, Barry. You're not okay, Barry. You're not okay. You've been struck by... You've been struck by a tall criminal named Averofstein. And at this point, no one's raising the interesting point of maybe he's from an alternate dimension. No one's saying, uh, like, is it a zombie? No, he's literally from an alternate dimension. He murdered his other safe so he could take that safe place. You know, stupid, stupid people. I mean, these guys may be scientific geniuses and they don't even understand concept of alternate dimensions, you know. Or parallel universes or anything like nonsense, you know. So from there, um, they're like, we need to form a plan to beat this guy, Atom Smasher, which Professor Stein comes up with and Cisco hugs him. And then uh, no one seems to bring up that Professor Stein has been without Ronnie for six months and he was chemically changed to be a part, half of Firestorm Matrix, so surely that should come in play at some point. But no, apparently not. You know, what can do? Anyway, Barry goes to uses a flash signal, which is brilliant. It's basically a police light with a flash logo on it. I mean, I don't know why superiors haven't tried that before, but what can do? So he uses that, and he cites that he's going to alert Atom Smasher out. Although, surely, it might also alert people he doesn't want to interact with. Heat Wave, Captain Cold, um, Weather Boy, uh, uh, Rainbow Razor, Grodd. Where is Grodd, anyway? And it's just like, this gorilla's been running and marking the city for seven months, and apparently no one's, like... Particularly, but it's like a throwaway line here, and then about him possibly murdering someone, but then it's ignored. But it's like he's literally wrong and loose in Central City. How has he been on wrong for seven months? You know, I mean, before at least you didn't know he was down there. Now you know he's here. Barry can patrol the entire city in a snap of his fingers, but somehow they can't find Rod. Maybe they don't want to. I don't know. Anyway, um, so Barry goes to fight Ant Smasher at, and runs away. Because their plan is to drain out and smash the walls radiation. Or no, to over, sorry, to overload him for radiation. That seems pretty messed up. I have to assume that's going to be a twist in tail because that's, that's straight up murder, you know. So then Barry runs and somehow out and smash her follows him to the radio nuclear plant, which is weird because it's like, how, how can you follow him? He literally runs at, like, I think last estimate 954 miles an hour. And somehow Ant Smash keeps up with him. Ant Smash does not have suit speed. He literally just grows tall and punches people, but apparently he can keep up for the flash. And he's like, Ha oh, Barry, you knew you couldn't you knew you couldn't get away with me from me. <sighs> Barry's like, Yeah, I know. It's like, how do you know you literally run faster than this guy can think? And yet he still managed to catch up with you. You know? Stupid. Anyway, he's like, I'm going to murder you now, Barry. So he runs at Barry, and Barry runs into a radiation chamber. So then Atom Smasher walks into a radiation chamber, and then Barry runs out radiation chamber, and suddenly if get Atom Smasher can almost keep up with Barry. So then Barry's like, do it, and they flood the booth full of radi- radiation chamber full of radiation, and they flood it to such an extent that Atom Smasher starts screaming in pain, and this is really messed up. He falls to his knees, then falls to the ground, all radiation cools off. So then Barry goes in when radiation's cooled off, and this guy literally has, like, growth on his face. He's charred. He's it's so messed up. And also, like, how's Barry not getting some residual radiation? Even if they caught radiation inside the chamber, it's radiation inside Adam Smash's body. And it's overflowing. And Adam Smash is like, oh, I'm sorry. And Barry's like, you know, you deserve this. You keep people. And it's like, Barry, what the fuck? Seriously, Barry, like, this is some dark shit. I thought you might be feeling better at this point, you know? Harrison's just admitted that he murdered Nora Allen in that video you and Caitlin saw. Your dad's going to be free from prison, and you just flooded a man with hundreds and hundreds of times the radiation that any human could possibly handle. Like... You murder this. I, I'm sure they just fight. This is literally murder. And let's face it, this isn't a case of Harrison Wells where this guy's a dangerous society. 
He made one attack in public, you know, where he tried to murder you, and then you found you caught up to him and he beat you up. He has done nothing to warrant this. This is messed up, and this is really, really a horrific way to start a season. I have to say, this is one of the nastiest, most horrifying things I've ever seen on TV. You can't justify this. Like, I'm sure they just... I think, you know, it's like we're missing 10 minutes of footage where, like, he burns down North Ned or he murders Henry Allen or something like that. This is so beyond the pale. And this is even worse, because Barry Season 1 doesn't murder... isn't responsible for any deaths. It's like, the Met, him, Met feelings are stupid enough to kill safe, so that's fine. This isn't like that. He tricks someone in going to a radiation chamber, and then he basically lo- launches the equivalent of a nuclear bomb full of NG on them. That is messed up. And then this guy's like, you know, I can tell you what happened. I just want to go home. Barry's like, oh, which mean home? This guy's like, he said he'd take me home. Barry doesn't press why this guy wants to go home or where he lives. He's like, he doesn't even say, well, I could have got you home. And then this guy's like, you know, it's Zoom. Zoom's responsible. And then he dies and Barry's like, we'll never mention this again. Honestly, like, Barry has to really step up in the next few episodes because that's really fucked up in so many, on so many levels. But now, screw that, it's time to get Henry where he's out of jail. So they do. And then they have a party, and Henry's immediately like, you know, I'm leaving. And it's like, wait, what? Henry's like, look, Barry, I'm not signed to a contract being every episode, so it wouldn't make sense for me to just show up randomly, so I have to make up a reason. I need to leave because you can't be Flash and you can't be hanging around and sun at the same time. And I scream at the TV at this point, he's literally your son and he's the Flash, there is no reason you would not stay around other than you, they don't want Pierce that to, to be a regular. And that's fine. But I would honestly, I'd rather just say that on air. Just have to say, you know, Barry, I would stay, I would stay around, but they, they won't give me, they won't sign me to a contract. Anything is better than this crap. Where it's like, I need to go, but I'll be here if you need me. Which basically screams, I will be here when they pay me to be here. So that's really bad. So yeah, that's um, that's almost the episode. But then they're all Star Labs at the end. The Skywalk thing after they talk about how much they've upgraded security because hey, let's make a running gag out of you guys being incompetent. So then Joe's like, "I'll shoot you if you take enough step." This guy takes enough step and says, "I'm Jay Garrick. I need you. To, I need to save this weird." And everyone stares at him, and they stare at him, and they stare at him. And then the episode ends. Okay, just for context, guys, Jay Garrick is a I'll break my cover of not knowing anything about Flash. Jay Garrick is a character from Flash comic books. He's the original Flash from the 30s and 40s. He's the Golden Age Flash, if you will. He gets his powers via a weird experiment like Flash. He's not as fast as the Flash, but he is like a, a older version of Flash. This clearly is not that Jay Garrick, um, but... This ending doesn't make any sense unless you know who Jay Garrick is. It's like on Heroes once when you had um, Nicole Nicole's Uhura from Star Trek show up. It's like Micah's grandmother and she's there. And she's there and camera zoomed in on her and triumphant music play. But it's like, this means nothing unless you know who these this woman is. This doesn't mean anything. And that's terrible, terrible, terrible writing. And this is really bad writing too, because it's like, my name's Jay Garrick. You know, you could have cut that bit. You could have just had him say, I'm, I'm the only one who can save you in the universe. That would be fine. That would be fine. And then follow up in the next episode. But to say, my name's Jay Garrick like it means something, it only means something if you know who Jay Garrick is. Which is the point. I have to break character of someone. I have to pretend... Stop pretending I don't know anything about Flash. Just explain to you guys how this makes any goddamn sense. i got to be honest, this was a really, really bad season premiere. <laughs> this was really, really, really bad. I get what they're going for, but this was really, really, really bad. Um, two out of five. Sorry, two out of five. Like, just really, really, really bad. Um, firstly, Superman... And some things he does in some movies which people call questionable, he has never done anything this messed up. Barry 
Tricking that guy and going to a radiation chamber is one of the nastiest things I've ever seen in Super Show or movie or comic book. Horrifying. Okay. If you want to deal with Atom Smasher, fine. I get you can't have him chilling up constantly. I get Adam Copeland, a gay edge, isn't going to be a regular on the show. I get it. But between this and Henry, that's really, really, really poor payoffs. Really, really poor payoffs. And this is one of the worst episodes of shows I've seen to date. And I hope season two picks up pace because, dear God, it can't, it needs to be more cheerful than this. So there's my flash recap. I'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday, May 6th, with um, uh, The Avengers. So, hope you enjoy that, and as always, remember, life is beautiful.